Okay, so we've talked a little bit about unions and intersections, so now let's talk about another set operation called uh, the difference of sets. So here, the difference of two sets A and B is everything that uh, is in A that is not in B. Okay, so um, how do we denote that? So it's noted like this, um, A, little backslash thingy, B, so we read this as A without B or A minus B, um, and that's the set of all x such that um, x is in A and x is not in B. Okay, okay so uh, remember the set builder notation and this element of symbol, we talked about those in earlier videos. So if you want to check those out, uh, please feel free to do so. Anyway, um, A without B is the set of all x such that x is an element of A and x is not an element of B. Okay? So we said this is also called A minus B. So we could write that as uh, A minus B like that. Um, I don't really like that notation though because we're not really doing subtraction, right? We're not subtracting anything here. There's no uh, subtraction going on. Um, we're just taking everything in A that's not in B. Okay? But you can just symbolically, I guess, represent that uh, with this kind of thing here. But anyway, um, I do prefer that notation. So that's, I'm gonna use this notation only uh, from now on. So let's uh, get rid of this here. Okay, let's talk about some properties. Um, and uh, do a quick example. So properties. Okay, so first, um, remember before we talk about the properties, remember when we talked about unions and intersections, uh, A union B is the same thing as B union A. A intersect B is the same thing as B intersect A. Now what's unfortunate here is uh, A without B is not the same as B without A. Okay, so if you do a set difference like this, A without B, if you do it the other way around, if you uh, flip these guys around, B and A, um, you're going to get something different in general. Okay, so in general, these guys are not equal. Okay, so be very careful about that. That's kind of the first property. Um, a without B is in general not the same thing as B without A. Okay, um, unless A and B are equal. Okay, unless, uh, unless A equals B. Okay, unless A equals B. Okay, so A without B is not the same thing as B without A unless A equals B. Okay, then what happens if A equals B? We'll talk about that. Um, okay, so A without B is not the same thing as B without A. So that's property one. Uh, property two says, um, property two says if you take a set difference of a set with itself, you just get the empty set back, okay? And that's actually why property one is true unless A equals B. Because if A and B are the same set, then you're doing a set difference of a set with itself. Okay, so A without B, well, for the same set, you're doing basically this, okay? And you just get back the empty set. B without A, well, if they're the same set, you're just doing basically this, okay? And you just get the empty set back. Uh, why do you get back the empty set? Well, let's uh, come up here, take a look at this. Um, so A without A, is the set of all x such that x is in A and x is not in A. Okay, so what are you saying? You're basically saying, give me all the elements in A that simultaneously are not in A. Okay, in other words, you're saying, give me elements that uh, are both in A and not in A. So that's just, that's crazy talk, right? You can't have something that both is and isn't in the set, okay? So you're basically saying, give me something that is and is not in the set A. Well, there is no such element that satisfies that ridiculous property, right? So you can't have something that both is and is not in the set. So you get nothing back. If you get nothing back, what's your answer? Your answer is the empty set, okay? Because you have nothing. Remember, the empty set has no elements. It's got nothing in it. So if your answer is, I got nothing back, then that means the empty set. Okay, so again, uh, A without A is the empty set. And that's why A without B is not equal to B without A, unless A equals B, because then you're just doing a set without itself, set without itself, set without itself, set without itself, you just get the empty set back, okay? So really we could say unless A equals B because then, uh, unless A equals B because, that's short for because, uh, then A without B equals B without A equals the empty set, okay? So, um, I'll remove that parentheses too, and put it over here. Okay, so A without B is different from B without A in general. They're not equal to each other unless A equals B because then A without B equals B without A equals the empty set, okay? It's just a little side note there. 
Um, how about, so this property is one and two, what about property three? What if we do any set without the empty set? Um, we're just gonna get that first set back, right? Why do we get that first set back? Let's come up here and see why. So we'll erase this also. So uh, A without the empty set, um, basically what we're saying is give me everything that's in A and not in the empty set. Well, um, what's in the empty set? Nothing, nothing is in the empty set. Okay, so um, you, you know, basically you're saying give me everything that's in this set A that's also not in the empty set. Well, since the empty set has nothing in it, then everything in A is already not in the empty set, okay? And more generally, every element ever in every set ever is uh, not in the empty set, okay? So, um, you know, this is because the empty set has nothing in it, so any other set you can think of, all the elements in those sets, they, they already are not in the empty set because there's nothing in the empty set. It's got nothing in it. Okay, so really X in A and X is not in the empty set is really just a longer way of saying, give me all the X in A. So basically you're just saying, give me all the X such that X is an element of A. Oh, well, that's just a fancy way of saying, give me the set A. Okay, give me every element in the set A. In other words, give me the set A. So that's why that equals A. And again, not a formal proof, just an informal explanation of why that's true. Okay, so that's property three. Um, property four says, what if we do this? Um, the empty set without A, well, then we just get back the empty set. Okay. So why might that be true? Um, well, let's, uh, let's erase all this stuff up here. We'll get rid of some of this too. Okay, and we'll see what's the uh, empty set without A. So the empty set without A, uh, empty set without A. So give me all the X in the empty set such that X is not in A. Okay. Well, uh, if you say give me all the X in the empty sets, um, even without this part right here, say give me all the X in the empty set, what's in the empty set? Absolutely nothing. There's nothing in the empty set because by definition of what the empty set is, it's, it's empty. Okay, there's nothing in there. So basically you're saying, give me all the elements in the empty set, which is already nothing. Give me all the ones such that those elements are not in A. Well, we don't even have to say this part because before we even get there, when we're right here, give me all the X in the empty set, uh, that's already nothing. And if I get nothing back, what do I have? I have the empty set. Okay, so remember if your answer is, uh, when you're talking about sets, if your answer is I got nothing back, then it's just the empty set, okay? So that's why. And again, just an informal explanation, not really a formal proof. So that's uh, the fourth property here. Let's see a quick example of this thing in action here. Um, and let's erase this. Let's reset it in case we want to refer back to it. So we'll reset this to uh, A without B like we originally had. Okay, so that's all the X in A and not in B. Okay, so let's um, set aside some space here for our example. So we'll really just do one example. Uh, maybe two two quick parts. So A is one, two, three, four. B is two, four, six, eight. Now let's say we want to find A without B. <clears throat> okay, so um, give me all the elements in A that are not in B. So what we have, the way we do this is we go through A and we see, okay, which of these guys are not in B? Okay, so what is A without B? Well, first we go through A and we see, okay, here's one. Does one appear in B? No, okay, so one does appear in A and one does not appear in B. So it satisfies this uh, criteria here. Okay, so one is part of the answer. Uh, what about two? Okay, two is the next one we look at. Is two in B? Uh, yeah, so it's not part of our answer. Because remember, we're looking for stuff that is here and not here, okay? What about three? Okay, three is the next one we look at. Is three down here? No. Okay, so three is here and three is not here, so that's good. So three is in A and three is not in B, so it is part of this difference here, okay? Um, how about four? Four is the next one we look at. Is that in B? Yeah, so it's not part of our answer and we're done because we finished looking through A, okay? Now, how about uh, B without A? What if we want to look at that? B without A. 
So now here we're just going to reverse the roles of A and B here. So now we're going to look at, uh, we're going to go through everything in B and see which of those guys are not in A. 2, okay, this is the first one in B we look at. 2, is 2 in A? Uh, yeah. Okay, so 2 uh, is in B and it also appears in A, so it's not part of the difference here. So remember, to be part of the difference, you have to be in B and not in A. Okay, what about 4? Does 4 appear in A? Yeah, here it is right here. Okay, so remember, that does not count as part of the answer because we have to be in B and not in A, but 4 is in A. What about 6? Okay, 6 is the next one we look at. Um, does 6 appear in A? No. Okay, that's great, so now 6 is part of our answer. Okay, 6, um, because 6 is in B and not in A. Okay, so remember, it's just this exact thing here, but we're just fl uh, flipping B and A around. Okay, so uh, flipping B and A around now. So 6 is in B and not in A, so it's part of this difference here. Okay, the last one to look at in B is 8. Um, what about 8? Does 8 appear in A? No. Okay, so 8 is in B and 8 is not in A. So it satisfies this criteria here with B and A switched over here. Okay, because uh, 8 does appear in B and does not appear in A. Okay, so it's in B without A. Okay, so it appears in B and not A. Okay, so that's a quick example here. So notice A without B, B without A, they're totally different sets, right? This one is 1, 3, this one is 6, 8. Just like this property one uh, tells us that these in general are different unless these sets are the same. Notice these sets are not the same, so we would expect these guys to be different, and in fact they are. Okay, so that's example 1. Um, with set differences. Okay, so um, not really too much worse than unions and intersections, but you know it's it's something worth talking about. So that's uh, example one and some uh, the definition and some properties with uh, set differences.